Okay, yeah, I'll get started. Welcome to another session of Demo Days. I'm Hubert, and today we will be uh, writing <clears throat> OS query logs to a real-time database, uh, real-time OLAP database. Um, there's many of them in the market today, one of which is Apache Pinot, which is down here in this pipeline. So this is the full pipeline that we're going to run today. Uh, if you joined us the last time and last demo days, we did um, the first the, the first half of this pipeline. We have a e EC2 instance in AWS use running OS query. Um, to summarize, OS query is a uh, is a tool that runs in the background of your operating system that captures events. In this case, what we're capturing are, are running processes that are run um, that are running in your operating system. And it, what is, what's nice about OS Query is that it has a SQL interface and we love SQL interfaces here at Decodable. So I provided a, a SQL statement for OS Query to run to give me um, events on running applications or processes that are running on that operating system. And we have an extension here that's sending that information, those logs into Pulsar, Apache Pulsar. Um, this is where Decodable takes over. We take that information and we create a connection to it from, from uh, Pulsar, connection, create a connection to Pulsar, and pull in that raw OS query uh, data that talks about that, that has process information there. And then this process here is actually a, is a, a, a stream, almost like a table, it's hold streaming data in it. Um, it's a way for you to kind of identify where this data is when you're when, when you're building SQL statements. So this is going to be our SQL statement here, and I'll show you that in, that code in a second. All it's doing is we're filtering out processes I know that are that can, you know creating noise basically. Um, if I'm running a machine learning uh, algorithm um, model on this, I want to train on this information. I don't want that noise. It'll just skew my results. Uh, it'll make it harder for me to just, you know, for data scientists and data engineers to really uh, find any uh, uh, analytics that are uh, insights that are uh, uh, that are going to consume this data and, and, and find anomalies. And that's really, you know, the purpose here is to be able to find anomalies in the uh, in the uh, the operating systems as far as running processes are concerned. Um, there's a second uh, um, SQL that we run. And I'll show you that first. So the the, the noise uh, SQL isn't really that interesting, but this one is uh, a little bit. So I'll show you that again. This was shown last time. I just want to um, I just want to uh, refresh your memory on what what is that actually doing. Uh, sus suspicious processes. And here's that SQL. Basically, what this is doing is looking for commands that it knows uh, that the SQL that decodable is running knows that it is, is okay to run. These are all very familiar, familiar um, processes that would run. Amazon, since it's an EC2 instance, you would expect something, you know, uh, for them to, 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 to run. These are all familiar things. I, I didn't capture them all, so you may find some things that are running that, that you think are okay. Um, but we can always come back to this, uh, this query here to add that list. In the future, we'll be able to add a, uh, a table uh, and join against that table so that every time, anytime there's an update to that approved list of, uh, of processes to run, we will just join to that table and then we wouldn't have to modify this query anymore. <clears throat> Likewise, what we're doing down here is looking for anything that's running for longer than a day. Sometimes these, run, these processes just run for a little bit and go away, come back again. We'll, we'll, what we want to do here is like look at the start time, and here notice that we're converting it to uh, um, to a data type that where we could do mass. So this is going to return a similar data type. So we wanted to use that to determine if something's running for longer than a day. Okay, so that's that's what this is going to do is just filter out those processes that we think are suspicious, and this is the the downstream stream that all that data is going into. Okay. I haven't run anything suspicious yet. Um, so these are all probably okay, but uh, we haven't updated our SQL to include these. Well, let me do something, you know, not common. Um, 
fix a log under that instance, and we can just run a, a top. So this is something that doesn't usually just run, and I'll just leave it there and see and see what happens. I'll continue on to this this picture here. What is that picture? See that I'm splitting it two different areas. Right now, um, I'm splitting the the suspicious. Oh, I'm sorry, the suspicious processes go here, so somebody can actually consume this information like a threat hunter, and get notified to look at the, these uh, processes to see what's happening or who may be logged into them, etc. And I also have a uh, a table here or, or or a stream that's that's got all the running running applications or processes on that operating system minus the ones that are causing noise. This will give us an idea of what's you know running the top the top commands or top uh, processes running on that operating system. I, I know that you could have like a farm of uh, uh, of operating systems, your laptop, your desktop. Um, other EC2 instances that have OS query on them, and you would have a huge amount of data coming into uh, into decodable, that could, and we would be able to filter that out for you and, and prepare your data for machine learning as well as uh, a visualization, which we'll do here. This Apache Pino is a real-time database, and we're going to send. We're right now we're sending only the cleanse data into Apache Pino. And in this demo, we're going to show you how to get this stuff in here. I think I've already done this. I can delete it and restart that process over again. So let's let's take a look at Apache Pino. Let's see what has what it has in there right now. Um, so this is a single node Apache uh, Apache Pino uh, uh, cluster. So everything here is one. There's only one broker, one controller, etc. Um, here are my tables. These are the tables that I, that I created. Notice that I have uh, both a OS query and an OS query suspicious. Let me let me delete this one and I'll and I'll and I'll create it, recreate it again. Okay. So I I, I do have a command here um, already running or not running, but uh, that, I, that that simplifies this whole this whole uh, my commands. I don't like to type a whole lot, so I'm just going to do it this way. I have a, uh, a a table here defined. I already have my controllers. So I need to provide my Pinot controller and its port, and uh, and a schema, right? So notice that there's a schema down here, and there are tables down here. So it's the same schema. That's that's the schema for uh, the OS query table here is going to be the same schema as the suspicious OS query table. So I'm providing the same the same schema. So you'll see that this won't uh, there won't be another row added to here, but there will be another row added to the tables. So let's just do that right now. So let me copy uh, this one. Does not command. Oh, this one, sorry. So it's successfully added. So if we refresh this, you'll see that we have the table. And if you click it, all we did was uh, created a JSON or configuration for this uh, for this um this table. This is the name of the table. This is the type of table it is. Um, if you go back one page, you'll see if you did this manually, you can create an offline table and a real-time table. We're doing a real-time table since we're doing real-time streaming data. Um, this is the, the schema that we're using. We provided that information. Um, and down here is where the, uh, the, the connection really happens. So we're not connecting to Apache Pino directly, but we're actually putting this data into Kafka and then Apache Pino is reading this Kafka topic to load it into. So we did, we did all the preparation in Decodable. We did the filtering, we, we reduced the noise and we wrote both of that, those data sets to do two different topics in Apache Kafka. And we're using that Kafka to send real time information to Apache Pino. Okay. 
So everything in here, uh, um, I'm using Confluent Cloud. So there's uh, security information here, your, your secrets. There's also information here to for your schema registry as well. Okay. And you can actually do this in the command line. In the GitHub repository, there's actually a uh, there's actually a uh, a template that you could use in Apache Pino. There's in here your templates, and here you can use uh, Jinja, and the instructions are in the um, the README. Basically, this is exactly what you need. You just need to replace the topic name. You need to replace your Bootstrap server, your schema registry same schema registry and then your confluent key and secret likewise for your for your uh, schema registry um, your sassel config down here okay uh, it generates that configuration for you automatically this is that schema that the uh, that 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 those, both of those tables are using <clears throat> and it's very simple okay? this is the this is the cleanse we're cleansing the schema or we're cleansing the data the suspicious data. So notice that it's reading from suspicious processes. It's flattening everything. So data, a real-time database likes their data well, well prepared. So it doesn't have to spend those cycles preparing that data, aggregating that, you know, it, it likes it simple. So uh, we made it simple for them. There was a complex type inside this data and we moved everything up one level. So notice here, there's a columns, uh, um, uh, context here, it's like a, a map, and we're pulling each value and bringing it up one level to so that this table is flat. And that's what Apache uh, Pino prefers. So now you can go to your query console and look at your suspicious, uh, your, your suspicious, your suspicious uh, processes and see if I could um, sort this by, uh, I don't see top in here yet. Um, but we'll, uh, let me see, make sure that this is talking to the right topic. Yeah. Suspicious. It is. So, um, maybe this isn't writing. Anyway, um, let's view this in, uh, superset. Superset is a BI tool that allows you to create dashboards and, um, bring in data from many different databases and, and um, data stores. It also can connect to um, real-time databases. So uh, let me go to databases. I have two databases here, to both real-time databases. Um, we'll do Roxette in another week, but right now we're going to do Apache Pino. If I edit this, this is my host name. And like over here, this is the, the broker or the controller. This is the broker. Um, you go to the, uh, the documentation. I don't know what it shows that here. No, it's a, uh, it'll, it'll show up in the blog that that's going to um, be um, published uh, later today. But um, this is the, this is the URL com, uh, um, format. Pino plus HTTP. So the first URL goes to the broker. The second URL goes to the controller. And then um, and you just test that connection. We should be successful. Okay. Notice this connection is good down here. So now I've added um, Apache Pino as one of my databases. I want to add a data set. We already have a set of a bunch of data sets here. Um, some of them. Uh, Roxa, other, uh, you know, I want to add, um, just kind of, I want to delete this one and just re-add it. Okay, so I want to add a data set and I want to choose OS, uh, um, you know, It'll parse, it'll go out to Apache Pino and ask, get more questions. So it'll pre-populate these down, uh, drop downs. So this is the schema I want. And the table I want to show is uh, this one. Uh, like that. <clears throat> so now I have a OS query suspicious. The database is uh, Pino. 
and so on. Okay, so I click this and I want to create a chart. Really simple to create a chart. Uh, the dimensions are simple. Just pick out some columns you want to view. It's like a select statement. So I want the host identifier at, uh, at that. I want to know the, what command is being ran. So add that. Um, what else could I add? Uh, oh, maybe the path or the working directory. Um, oh, uh, obviously I want the, the process name. Great. Uh, I want to add a metric to here. So I want to do a count for all these guys. Okay. So create a chart. There it is. I'll save that. So this is suspicious processes from uh, uh, Pino. Uh, and filtered by Dakota Raw, obviously. And then I want to put it in this dashboard that I've already created called OS Query Events. So save that. Go to dashboards. Dashboards. OS Query Events. Uh, and it's already added it. I don't like the way that looks. So let me fix it a little bit. I'll bring it up here. Expand this a little bit over here and save that. Um, notice that already you can see when it sorted it, the, um, the, the, the thing that, I, that the process I was running top is already at 133. Um, to somebody that was monitoring the systems that, uh, that he or she is uh, managing or adminning, um, this would show up as a top. Um, I would probably go question why that person is doing that. Um, if those instances or those operating systems shouldn't be doing those processes. So um, over here, I've already written or created a uh, um, the top processes. So if you had um, many hosts you're running and uh, you could kind of figure out which ones, uh, which process is being ran out of all of all your, your farm of uh, computers. You can also filter this based on um, a host and the process name, et cetera. So there's lots of things you could do from this view. Okay. So that takes us from uh, the beginning of this demo from, from OS query. Remember, uh, this is all streaming. Not once did this data land into like a, uh, uh, a database to store and everything, like, everything is real time, everything is streaming. So we took that data from OS query it went to a streaming platform called Pulsar, decodable uh, create, uh, processes using a, the, its um, streaming platform to process and filter and, and, and route that data and sends them both, creates two different data sets and sends them to a real-time database. And now we're viewing them all in Apache Superset, okay? Uh, completely streaming real-time uh, example. That's it for this demo. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to us either in our Slack channel or support at decodable.co. And I will see you next time when we talk about other real-time databases. Thank you.